I'm here speaking with uh, Dr. Philip Polstra, uh, and he's given me some uh, some good insight into what's going on with digital forensics lately. Uh, uh, Phil, what's what's give us an overview first of all. Well, I'd say as we all know, increasingly today we have more and more of our world is becoming digital, and so even in traditional crimes, we have things like you know if you bust somebody for a possible crime, you tend to do things like. Uh, seize all their smart devices and get some information off of that. So, you know, we have this whole class of uh, evidence gathering that's going on today where you have digital CSIs, if you will, who are going out there and they're gathering evidence off of phones, computers, all kinds of uh, crazy digital devices and using that in order to assist in solving some crimes. Also, you know, uh, people who are expected of mal uh, misdoings at their companies. Uh, sometimes there'll be investigations internal uh, where they can uh, have some digital forensics that come into play. They look at, hey, when, when did this information flow off of this device? Where did it go? Those sorts of uh, things happen. And of course, we have cybercrime itself. So we have you know, some crimes that are purely uh, an invention of the digital age, and we have a lot of traditional crimes that have been enhanced with technology, such as identity theft is a, is a big one. Then. So, and, and there's, there's a, um, this has really brought the legal community uh, as well as besides the law enforcement, uh, you know, in, in closer touch with, with what we do in, in cybersecurity uh, in the sense of, uh, of discovery. Right. Right. So, uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of bit of work in the last couple of years in forensics, uh, a lot of things particularly related to USB forensics. Uh, you know, how do you find information off of USB devices? Uh, how do you successfully make copies of them? And how do you do that stuff cheaply? You know. And what about what about issues of uh, credibility of the evidence found? Uh, isn't there, you know? A the chance that somebody can be uh, clever enough to also plant things to throw you off course? You could always plant things, uh, you know, all you need to do is physically plant something that's digital and uh, there's no way you're going to necessarily detect that. Although it is true that a lot of cases involve a combination of physical and digital forensics. So for example, if I was going to plant a thumb drive on someone, I might leave some fingerprints behind. And so if someone were to discover my fingerprints on that device, it would be kind of obvious that I perhaps planted it. And what about the, the kinds of tools that you use in digital forensics? Um, personally, I use a lot of uh, open source and uh, open source hardware, software, and other tools. Uh, there are commercial tools available. They tend to be rather expensive, which is kind of limiting. Uh, in particular, if you're looking at internal investigations or you know civil lawsuits, things like that, where you don't have the highest standard of evidence, uh, you're probably not going to spend $800 for a forensics device that you may never use. Uh, whereas if you can build your own for $20, you might do that. And so what, what kind of resources uh, can people who are interested in, in delving into more digital forensics, so where can they go to find some of these uh, open source appliances, uh, tools? Uh, you know, there's not a central collecting point so much. Uh, there are some places if you Google uh, you, you will find like an open source forensics website. I forget the exact address. Um, you know, I have some stuff on my website, some of the projects that I've done with things like uh, uh, forensic duplicators for USB devices, uh, a $20 write blocker. Uh, uh, last year at DEF CON, I actually talked about a USB impersonation device that you could use to bypass endpoint security by making your device look like it was authorized. Uh, but, you know, those sorts of things are out there and they're in the open source community and they're available, so. Excellent. And Dr. Philip Polstra, thanks for taking time to uh, give us a little 101 on uh, digital forensics. No problem. My pleasure.